Hey everybody, uh, Mr. Covey here, and welcome to the first AP Calculus summer video. Uh, Ms. Lemke and I are really excited about the fall, and uh, we hope you're ready to review some math. So uh, this first video is on evaluating limits, which was kind of the first calculus idea you started talking about in MAH. Uh, this over here is Lindsay Lohan. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Rump, if you had him, showed you the Mean Girls clip. He is a huge Lindsay Lohan fan. Uh, and we're going to review valuing limits from a graphical perspective, from an algebraic perspective, from a numerical numerical perspective, and also just thinking a little bit about how to think about limits using our number sense, because you guys got good number sense. Uh, all right, let's dive right in. First thing, evaluating limits based on a graph. Remember, if we want to say what the limit, if we want to say uh, our y values are approaching something as our x values are approaching a number, uh, we need to think about it as coming from the left and the right. Okay, so let's start with this one. This is saying, what y value are we approaching as x approaches negative 1 from the right? That's what that little positive See, So as our x values approach negative 1, oops, excuse me, from the right, our y values are approaching 2. This one here, saying as x approaches negative 3, what are our y values approaching? Since there's no plus or minus there, we need to look at from the left and from the right. From the left, we're approaching 3. From the right, we're approaching 3. So overall, we can say we're approaching 3. As x approaches 1 from the left, what y value are we approaching? 2. As x approaches 3, well, let's make sure we look at from the left and from the right. Both cases, our y value is approaching negative 2. Please note, this is a completely different question than asking you f of negative 1. F of negative 1 is saying, what is the y value when x is negative 1? The y value is 2. What is the y value when x is 1? Well, there is no y value. So we say our function is undefined. Please note that limits do not exist. Functions are undefined. Those are different terms. As x goes to 1, let's look at from the left and from the right. Both cases, our y values are approaching 2. And as x approaches 0, our y values from the left and from the right are both approaching 3. Okay? So that's one way you can evaluate limits is graphically. You can also evaluate them numerically. If you could make that into a little plus there. So if you have a table of values, you can say, oh, look, as x is getting closer to 5 from the left, my y values are getting, it appears, closer to 75. As my x values are getting closer to 5 from the right, my y values are also getting closer to 75. Therefore, overall, as x gets closer to 5, my y values are getting closer to 75. Please note again, this is a completely different question than what is f of 5. Well, there is no y value at x is 5, so f of 5 is undefined. If a table is not provided for you, you can, of course, make a table. Okay, so here's a limit. You should know what this limit is, but if you happen to forget, and you have a graphing calculator, you can always make a table. Go ahead and make a table for that real quick. So here's my table I made. As x gets close to 0 from the left, those are the x values I put, picked. As x gets close to 0 from the right, those are the x values I picked. You can see in both cases our y values are approaching 1. Okay. Hope you guys are having a good summer. Uh, I got a puppy this summer named Benny. That is my puppy. That is my wife. This is the puppy again, eating a shoe. So I hope you guys are having a good summer too. Uh, moving on. Uh, one main way you guys evaluated limits in MAH was algebraically. So don't forget that your go-to technique when you're asked to evaluate a limit algebraically is direct substitution. Don't forget about direct substitution. So like, what y value does this function approach as x approaches negative 5? It just approaches the y value at negative 5. There's nothing fancy or weird going on. I'm going to plug in negative 5, negative 5 cubed minus 22, what is that, negative 147, done. The reason that you forget about that sometimes is because usually when you're asked to evaluate a limit, it's because when you substitute, or the reason you do it algebraically is because when you substitute in the x value, so in this case you substitute in 3 in the numerator, you get 0. Substitute 3 in the denominator, you get 0. This is that indeterminate form, you might remember. 
and this is uh, when you have to do actual algebra. So in this case, the algebra is pretty uh, easy. What are we going to do? We're just going to factor the numerator, factor the denominator. So if I factor the numerator, I get that. If I factor the denominator, what do I get? That. The nice thing that happens here, of course, is that I get some canceling. Boom, boom. I'm left with this limit as x goes to 3 of just x minus 1 over x plus 4. And now I can use that direct substitution now that I've canceled out those x minus 3s and I'm left with 2 7. Uh, just a quick reminder what that indeterminate form is telling you. It's telling you that that function has a whole that x value, has a removable discontinuity at that x value. So when you're valuing the limit, you're trying to figure out the y value that you're getting close to, but there is no actual y value there. That's why you have to do this algebra. Okay. Uh, for this one here, don't be tricked again. Just use direct substitution. It's nothing fancy. Negative 25 over negative 5 is 5. Don't always think that you have to do something fancy. Okay. Uh, remember how this works for piecewise functions? You really need to think about, hey, what's y value is my x, or is my function approaching as x goes to 2 from the left? If I'm approaching 2 from the left, I'm going to use this definition, because this is the definition for when x is less than or equal to 2. So I'm going to plug in 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. So from the left, I'm approaching 1. From the right, well, if I'm approaching 2 from the right, I need to use this definition, because this is the definition for when x is greater than 2. If I plug in 2, 2 times 2 minus 3 is 1. So since from the left and from the right I'm approaching the same y value, I'm allowed to say that overall, as x goes to 2, my function goes towards 1. Okay. A couple other algebraic techniques. Uh, here, if you do direct substitution, you get 0 over 0. So I need to do fancy algebra. In this case, fancy algebra, i got a complex function. I need to find a common denominator in the numerator. That common denominator is going to be 3 plus x times 3. Uh, I multiplied this denominator by 3, so I'm going to multiply that numerator by 3. I multiplied this denominator by 3 plus x, so I'm going to multiply this numerator times 3 plus x. I'm going to do a little simplifying up top. The multiplication sign. I'm going to get, oops, this is all over x. I'm going to get negative x divided by 3 plus x times 3 all over x. I'm going to change that x in the denominator to an x over 1. So I got a fraction divided by a fraction. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Don't forget this is still a limit. I should be writing that. So I have my limit as x goes towards 0 of negative x divided by 3 plus x times 3 times 1 over x. Finally, I get my canceling that I really want to happen. Boom, boom. I get negative 1 on top. I have this on the bottom. And I can finally do that direct substitution after the canceling, and I get negative one-ninth as my answer. So just a little fancy algebra there. The other fancy algebra that you definitely remember is when you have a square root, you do direct substitution, and I get zero over zero again. So I'm going to use the conjugate here. So if you remember how that works, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of the numerator. It's the exact same thing, except with the opposite sign. But I can't multiply the top by something unless I multiply the denominator by something. Same thing. Uh, remember the nice thing about the conjugate is when you multiply something by its conjugate, those middle two terms kind of cancel out. They go away. So I just do first times first. Square root of x times square root of x is x. Negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4. Cool. I am not going to multiply out the denominator. Don't do that. It makes it more complicated and actually keeps you from seeing what you want to see which is that you finally, well not finally, that you have something that cancels. We got an x minus 4 on the top, x minus 4 on the bottom. Those go away. I'm left now with 
this limit. And now with this limit, I can use direct substitution. If I substitute in 4 for x, I get 1 over 4 as my answer. Okay. Um, you also talked about limits at, as x approached infinity. In other words, as x increased without bounds. Uh, hopefully you remember for something like this, it's a rational function. The degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator. You might have called that like even, heavy, I don't know, something like that. Uh, in which case the limit is just the ratio of the coefficients. Uh, for something like this, the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. It is bottom heavy. So as x goes to zero or neg or sorry, infinity or negative infinity, the limit would be zero. For something like this, uh, absolute value of x over x, we're not really going to use algebra. We're going to use our brains. So turn your brain on if it's been off. Uh, and we're just going to think about it. If I plug in a super big negative number, like negative a million, well, then I'm going to get positive a million on the top and negative a million on the bottom with positive a million divided by negative a million, negative one. Yeah, not really doing algebra, I'm just kind of using my number sets. Here, similarly, kind of just think about this limit. Can't plug in zero because we get zero over zero in determinate form. Maybe you remember that this graph looks like this. Well, for positive x values, it's just one. But for negative x values, it's negative one. So as I go towards zero from the left, I'm going towards negative one. But as I go towards zero from the right, I'm going towards positive one. They do not agree, the left and the right limit. So my limit does not exist. Okay. Cool. Uh, so I'm going to give you some practice problems now. Uh, so go ahead and try these. Pause your uh, video. Try these and I'll show up the answers. Okay. Those are what you should have gotten for your answers there. Please note for those highlighted ones, we're not saying that the y values are approaching infinity or negative infinity. You can't get close to infinity. It's not a number. What we're saying is that you're just like getting bigger and bigger. So we describe that as saying we're getting close to infinity. Just be a little careful about that there. Uh, next page here. Go ahead and evaluate this limit using a table. Maybe you know that limit. It's, uh, it's one of those fancy limits. Uh, it actually approaches E, it's one of the limit definitions of E. You see, as our x values get close to zero, we're getting close to 2.7 something something, 7, 1, whatever. We're getting close to that number uh, E. Okay. A couple algebraic limits. Go ahead and pause and give these three a try. 2, 2, and negative 1 half as your answers for those three, using uh, some of those algebraic techniques we talked about. And... Oops. Lastly, uh, I want you to give these three a try uh, and kind of just do them using your number sets. Go ahead and give those a try. Uh, that's what you should have gotten for those three. I'll run through these real quick. Uh, for this one, if you plug in a giant negative number, it's going to turn positive because of the absolute values, and it's going to be three times as big. If you plug in that same giant negative number here, it's still going to be negative. So you're basically going to have like 3 million over negative 1 million if you plugged in negative a million, and so you'd get out negative 3. Not doing any algebra, I'm just using my number sense. Same with this one. If I plug in a giant negative number and I cube it, it's going to still be negative. If I do two times a negative giant negative number, still going to be negative. A giant negative over a smaller negative, it's going to be positive, and it's going to go towards infinity. For this one, you guys did learn some fancy algebra for this, but the way I think about this is, don't worry about that stuff, because it's not important as x gets really big. Don't worry about that. What does the square root of x squared act like? Well, it acts like x when x is positive. So this kind of acts like the square root of 3 times x over 2x x's cancel, it approaches root 3 over 2. Alright, that concludes this first video. Uh, the next two are Mrs. Lemke, and then the fourth one is back to me. Uh, so don't forget to watch all of these videos, and I will uh, see you in the fourth video.